Hello everyone, and let's check out the fourth game between Steinitz and Adolf Anderson. The clash continues, and Wilhelm Steinitz is leading with one extra point. Wilhelm Steinitz is two points against Adolf Anderson's one point. The winner will crown himself as the unofficial world chess champion. So this game was played on 23 of July. Two days later, from the previous game, the previous game was played on July 21 in 1866. This is July 23, and this time Wilhelm Steinitz has the white pieces and Adolf Anderson has the black pieces. Steinitz starts the game with playing e4, e5, f4 the king's gambit. He takes on f4, knight to f3, g5, bishop to c4, g4, attacking the knight, knight to e5, and queen to h4 by Anderson, this is check. In July 20, 1866, when Steinitz had the white pieces against Anderson, they played the same exact moves, so this is the same opening. After queen to h4 check, Steinitz played king to f1, just like in July 20. And then we have knight to h6 by Anderson, defending the pawn. d4, d6 by Anderson, attacking the knight, knight to d3, f3, Steinitz played g3. And these moves were the same exact moves of the second game between Steinitz and Anderson. After g3, we have queen to e7, and this was something new. This was a different move by Anderson. In July 20, Anderson played queen to h3, this is check. King to e1, and then queen to h5, because Steinitz was threatening to play knight to f4, and that was trapping the queen. So this is what happened in the second game. In the fourth game, we have queen to e7. Anderson is trying something different. Steinitz played knight to f2, defending the pawn, bishop to e6, knight to a3, bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, queen to e6, defending the knight and attacking the queen, queen to g6, h3, and Steinitz wants the h-file for his rook. Anderson played knight to d7, bishop takes on h6, bishop takes bishop, h takes on g4, b5, attacking the knight. Steinitz played knight to a3, knight to e5 by Adolf Anderson, attacking the pawn, attacking the g-pawn. Steinitz captured the pawn, knight takes on b5, and he is also attacking on c7. But we have rook to b8, and Anderson is occupying the b-file for the rook. But Steinitz played knight to d4, a defensive move after rook to b8. If knight takes on c7, what happens then? Then this is actually trapping the knight. Rook to b6, and where is the knight going? Nowhere. So after rook to b8, Steinitz played knight to d4, and bishop to e3. Knight takes on f3, queen to f6 by Adolf Anderson, attacking the knight, defending with the king, and bishop takes on f2. Well, of course, in this position, Steinitz played the best move, and he played knight takes on e5, not king takes bishop, or something else. Well, for example, if king takes on f2, then knight takes on g4, this is check. King to e2, and rook takes on b2, and black is much better, white is losing. So of course we have knight takes on e5 by Steinitz, bishop takes on g3, and if king takes bishop, queen takes knight with check. So Steinitz played knight to d3, defending the bishop, queen to e2, queen to e7, rook from e to f1, bishop to g5. Rook to f5, f6, rook from h to f1, and in this position, Adolf Anderson castled. A late castling by Adolf Anderson. 
Also, in the general rules of chess, if you don't have a good reason, you should castle before the tenth move, usually. And Anderson castled at move 27. A late castling. B3. Rook from B to E8. Rook to E1. Defending the pawn. King to H8. So Anderson wants to G-file for his rook. For attacking the weak pawn of white, as you can see. Knight to F2. By Steinitz. Bishop to H4. Attacking the defender of the G-pawn, rook to h5, and bishop takes on f2. Queen takes bishop, and rook to g8, by Adolf Anderson, targeting the G-pawn. That's the only pawn which is guarding the king. So, Steiners played queen to f5, defending with the queen, and he is also targeting the h-pawn. Rook to g7, defending with the rook. More protection to the h-pawn, and he also wants to double his rooks, and attacking the g-pawn. Rook to h6, and Steinis is attacking the f-pawn. Both players have some weakness in this position, but white is better. Adolf Henderson played, rook from e to g8, attacking the pawn. How to defend? Steinis played rook from e to h1, leaving the pawn, and Anderson captured the pawn. Rook takes on g4, check, king to f3, rook to g3, king to e2. Anderson played rook from 3 to g7, going back and defending. What else? But then, this time, Steinitz captured the other weak pawn. Rook takes on f6, rook to g2, check, king to d3, rook from 8 to g3 by Anderson. And black is going out of checks. After king to c4, Adolf Anderson made a blunder. And he played rook to e3. And this was a blunder. A horrible move by Anderson. Actually in this position black was burst by far. So Steinis played rook to f8. And as you can see, black is in trouble. Well in this position, which move was the best move for black? Actually c6 was the better move, for offering the best resistance, but again, black is losing. So rook to f8, and how to defend? Of course with the rook, then rook to f7, and this is very unpleasant, black is in deep trouble, maybe black needs to resign. Would you defend the queen, or would you defend the checkmate threat? There is no sensible defense, either black is losing the queen, or black is getting checkmated. Let's say c takes on d5, queen takes pawn, and what now? Check, and black is going out of checks. And now, black has to capture the rook, and queen takes queen. It's over for black. Actually, this was the best resistance for black, for prolonging the game. As you can see, Adolf Henderson is in deep trouble, that's why. He couldn't find a decent defense in this position, and he played rook to e3, attacking the e-pawn. Wilhelm Steinitz played the killer move, and he played rook to f8. That's check. Blocking with the rook, what else? If king to g7, then rook takes on h7. Check. Mate. So, blocking with the rook, what else? Steinitz captured the rook. Rook takes on g8, king takes rook, and then Wilhelm Steinitz played the move, and Adolf Henderson resigned. Wilhelm Steinitz simply played rook to g1, and Adolf Henderson resigned once again for the third time against Wilhelm Steinitz. Wow, Steinitz is leading with two extra points. Steinitz is three points. Wilhelm Steinitz scored 3 points against Adolf Anderson's 1 point. And Steinitz needs 5 more wins and then he is going to be the new world chess champion. A very critical moment of this clash, of this match. And why did Adolf Anderson resign? Let me show you the possible continuation. Of course you can't block with the queen or with the rook. As you can see that's why 
Moving the Rook was a very bad idea by Anderson because now Rook to G1 was possible. Black should always stay in the G file with the Rooks. And that would hold the position together. But again, if White would play the accurate moves, Black was doomed. So let me show you the possible continuation. If King to H8 running away, what happens then? Then Queen to C8, check, and there is no defense. You can only defend with the Queen. Blocking with the Queen, then Queen takes Queen, check, mate. There is no sensible defense, and Black is getting checkmated. So this is why, after Wilhelm Stein is played, Rook to G1, Adolf Anderson resigned. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time, in the fifth game, between Anderson and Steinitz. So take care, and bye bye.